All right, now let's try these fractions. Uh, in an earlier lesson, we were moving fractions, but the fraction was not attached to the variable. So think back on equations. When we had a fractional x, do you remember what we had to do? We had to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fractional x. So in this particular case, 1 fifth x is less than 4. The reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5 or 5 over 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 or 5 over 1. And this will clear out to 1 positive x. The sign remains the same because there's no negative variable. And 4 times 5 is 20. You remember that from equations? Okay, on this one, we have a negative 2 thirds x is greater than or equal to 8. Now, I'm going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal doesn't change the sign, it just flips. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 3 over 2. And over here, a negative 3 over 2. Okay, this will now turn into a positive 1x. Uh-oh, uh wait a minute. Didn't Whoa, rule number 2. We just multiplied by a negative to make that variable turn positive, didn't we? Well, if you divide by a negative to make it positive, then when you multiply by a negative to make it positive, you've got to change the sign. So there's rule number two. I'm going to change that sign. And over here, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller for us. I'm going to go ahead and say 2 into 2 is 1. 2 into 8 is 4. 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. And so 1x is now less than or equal to a negative 12. So we had a couple things we had to take care of. We had to take care of a reciprocal, a negative reciprocal on both sides, and then change the sign because we had a negative variable. All right, let's look at this last one. Okay, on this one, it looks a little strange. Um, a lot of times you'll see it written this way, but keep in mind there really is a, a 1 right there. So I'm going to write it again for you. Should you happen to see it this way, it's really nothing but 1 fourth x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 7. And now we can move our 6 like we normally do. Take away 6, take away 6. I have a positive 1 fourth x is greater than or equal to 7 and a negative 6 is a positive 1. But I don't want to solve for 1 fourth x. I want to solve for a positive 1 whole x. So let's multiply by the reciprocal, which is a positive 4 over 1, or 4, and on this side 4 as well. These clear out to a positive 1x, and 1 times 4 is 4. Okay? Okay. Now, all of these inequalities that we have been solving can also be graphed, but this time they're going to be graphed on a number line. And so I want to give you some examples of that. Uh, I'll draw my little number line right here. When we graph on the number line, we're going to use an open circle and a closed circle to denote something. If we see the less than or greater than sign, the circle will be open. If we see less than, greater than, or equal to, uh, it's going to be a closed circle. So let's pretend that we've solved all those inequalities. We came down to the answer, and now we want to graph that on the number line. Okay? So let's say that I have, let's say that I've solved my inequality, and I was left with x is greater than or equal to 4. Now, how are we going to solve that? Well, we're going to go over to the 4 on the number line. And because it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to put a big closed circle at 4. Okay? Now, to decide what direction we should go, I want you to read from the x side. What is the relationship of x to the number 4? What is he? He is what? 
bigger than. And on the number line, when you go to the right, things get bigger. So I can draw my line just like that. That represents x is greater than or equal to 4. Okay? All right, let's try another one. I think I'll do um, x is less than a negative 5. Okay, here's your 0. First, we're going to go to a negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, is it going to be an open or closed circle? It's going to be an open circle at the negative 5. Open circle. Now, read from the x side the relationship of x to the number. x is what? Less than. And on the number line, less than goes to the left. So there's a picture representation of what that inequality says. Okay, let's try another. I'm going to say x, I mean 8 is less than or equal to x. Okay, where are you going to go? Well, of course, you're going to go out there to an 8, so we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll say this is 8 right out there. And is it going to be an open or closed? It is going to be closed, that is true. So I'm going to put a big old closed right there. Now, it doesn't matter what side of the x is on. Read from the x side every single time. What is x's relationship to the number 8? x is what compared to 8? x is bigger, greater than. So we must go in the positive, greater than direction. There's a picture of 8 is less than or equal to x. x is greater than 8. Okay, and let's go one more. Let's say that I have 4 is greater than x. This time, I'll go to a positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and is it going to be an open or closed? It's going to be an open, okay, big open right there at 4, and don't read from the 4 side because you'll go the wrong direction. Read from the x side. The relationship of x to the 4, x is what? Less than, so we need to go in that direction. So it doesn't matter the size of the inequalities that we do. When you finally get down to the end and you have a variable is less than, greater than, or, or whatever to a number, you can simply graph it on the number line just as we have done. Just remember that an open is for less than or greater than, and a closed is for less than, greater than, or equal to. Now that wasn't too bad, was it? Thank you.